Welcome back to another port review, this time we're reviewing the ports of Final Fantasy X and of X2. I tried to get a hold of a copy of every port of each game, but thank you to Square for providing a copy of the Switch and Xbox ports of the HD remaster. We're gonna focus on what was added, changed, or removed from each sequential version of the games. While X will be the main focus of this video, X2 did undergo many of the same enhancements when it's part of the HD remaster, but I'll cover the changes between the ports of Final Fantasy X2 exclusively as well. Now, before we get into it, I just want to preface this video by saying there is no wrong way to play Final Fantasy X or X2 as long as you enjoy the experience. Just like Final Fantasy VII or IX, people have some pretty strong opinions about these games and their re-releases. However, my goal remains to try to inform you on what each port of the games are like. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The PS2 version released in Japan in July 2001 and in the US in December 2001. I gotta say, I think visually the game aged really well, and I'd still say is one of the best looking PS2 games. And that's crazy because it released in 2001, it was so early in the PS2 life cycle. Just a heads up though that I was originally intending to record this game via composite cables, and it comes out pretty dark on a modern display. So if you're looking to play this game on a modern display and not on a CRT, you're gonna need something like a component setup or S-Video or RGB. Or you can go the method of how I recorded the footage and use a PS3. The backgrounds are a mix of 3D and 2D and they blended really well together in this version. The US version had minor quality of life changes, and I would guess I'd call them balance changes as well. For example, they added auto sort and changed how bribe works. And then of course we have the international version of Final Fantasy X which released in January 2002 in Japan. It introduced 9 new super boss fights, new sphere grid abilities, and more quality of life and balance changes as well as introduced the expert sphere grid, which has fewer nodes, everyone starts near the middle, but you're able to do some quirky non-standard builds for the characters. You are also now able to choose between the Japanese and English version of the game. Whatever your choice is, it restricts both voice and text to this setting. The international version in Japan also included a bonus DVD, which has some developer interviews and behind the scenes and Final Fantasy X Eternal Calm, which is a short movie that takes place between X and X2. Eternal Calm did see a US release through PlayStation Magazine and a PAL release through a bonus DVD in the Unlimited Saga Collector's Edition. Speaking of PAL, Final Final Fantasy International also released in Australia and Europe in May 2002, but it was just called Final Fantasy X. The PAL version ran slower as the game wasn't properly optimized for 50Hz, but the Black Label PAL version also includes Beyond Final Fantasy, which is a bonus DVD with interviews of the devs and the voice actor for Titus and Yuna. Final Fantasy X-2 released in Japan in March 2003, then North America in November 2003, and in Europe February 2004. Now for X-2, the FMV for the performance of a thousand words sees a dozen or so changes between the Japanese and US version. And then we have Final Fantasy X-2 International Plus Last Mission, which released exclusively in Japan in February 2004. Now Last Mission is a playable sequel to X-2, and it uses your save file from X-2 to determine how it will play out. Out. The international version of X2 introduced a whole bunch of new content, such as a creature creator system, two new super bosses, two new dress spheres, and four new garment grids. X and X2 International both had numerous quality of life and balance changes made to accessories. So if you prefer games on their original hardware, the PS2 versions actually aged well. But let's take a look at what the HD remasters of the games have to offer. So the PS3 versions released in Japan in December 2013 and the rest of the world March 2014, and it was known as as Final Fantasy X-10-2 HD Remaster, and was based on the international version of both games. The HD Remaster was done to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the game. Nomura negotiated with Square and the HD Remaster was greenlit. While unfortunate, but probably not surprising, not all data from the original development project remained. While Virtuo Studios assisted in development, internal staff had tried to salvage data and repair what they could from the original data, but apparently it was to a point where some assets were just easier to remake from scratch. Some models were remade, controllable characters were reworked, and pre-rendered backgrounds were redrawn. And because the playable character models were reworked, they don't have the same look as what they originally had, and some people prefer how the original models had looked over the HD remaster models, specifically for the faces of Titus and Yuna. Now in my research on this topic, I ran into a popular belief that the reason people believe the PS2 faces of Titus and Yuna look and animate 
anime better was because of what is known as the Emotion Engine. The Emotion Engine is the name of the PS2 CPU, and its primary function had nothing to do with faces or facial animation. Rather, it had a multitude of functions, such as geometry calculations and behavior and world simulation. Despite that though, Yoshinori Kitase, the director of FF10, has stated that there were development challenges when porting the game from the PS2 architecture to the PS3s. So I really can't confirm if the change in hardware is why the faces changed or if it was due to lost data, but the change in hardware is what most people seem to believe. But I digress, the game is what it is in its current state. Anyways, the game is 1080p and 16x9 natively. The camera angles of some scenes were actually changed to accommodate the new 16x9 aspect ratio. The HD remaster had new textures, models, lighting, shadowing, UI, and typeface, though minor characters didn't see the same improvements as others. While the HD remaster has higher quality FMVs, they're actually not re-rendered. They're still 4x3 but were cropped to fit 16x9. Both 10 and 10 2 received a remaster soundtrack. The sound team approached Kitase about remastering the OST when they found out about the project. Keiji Kawamori, the music director, had said that the option to choose between the original soundtrack and the remastered was planned but cut due to technical issues. On the flip side of audio, the voices and sound effects were now higher quality. However, the option to pick between Japanese and English was removed. This was apparently done due to Vita limitations, as they wanted both versions of the game to be as close as possible. The HD remaster also added cloud saves, trophies, and cross-save compatibility compatibility between the Vita and PS3 version, and also Eternal Calm and Last Mission are both included in the HD remaster, as well as a new audio drama known as Final Fantasy X Will which takes place one year after Final Fantasy X-2. Cloud saves and cross saves, by the way, also applies to X-2 and X-2 Last Mission. Now, Last Mission does not read a save file anymore. Instead, it assumes that you had a perfect ending and 100% completion. So with the PS3 version, it has really bad load times, at least with the physical disc. It has worse frame drops than the original game, and the battle menus feel chunkier. And what I mean by that is you can't move your cursor for a tiny bit after going between menus. It's just not as responsive. Meanwhile, the original game is snappy and menus move as fast as you can move through them. In some ways, the PS3 version had some improvements on the original but was hit and miss in a few ways, and the future releases of the HD remaster do improve on some of the missed aspects. Before we continue though, we gotta clear up one of the biggest requests and questions people have about the HD remaster. Can you skip cutscenes in the HD remaster of 10? No. Mostly no. In no version of the HD remaster as of today lets you skip cutscenes. I say mostly no and I'll explain what I mean when the time comes, but the too long didn't watch is no. Now that we've got that out of the way, the next port of the game is the Vita version. And this was the birth of the quick recovery mechanic, which is exclusive to the Vita and Switch version of the game. If you slide on the touchscreen outside of battle, it brings up a recovery menu. You can also use the touchscreen when Yuna's in battle to change the length of the summon cutscenes. The Vita version really makes compromises for port Ability. It has some pretty bad frame rate issues, and not just in battle, but in the field too, as well as compressed audio. Of course, it feels a little unfair to compare how this version looks to the other versions. It still looks perfectly fine on the Vita itself. If you have a Vita, it's a cheap version of the game to have, but there is a future portable version of the game coming up that has more improvements and less drawbacks. In the meantime though, let's talk about the PS4 version. The HD remaster released on PS4 in May 2015. Virtual Studios is once again heading this port and they will be heading every port of the HD remaster up until the Switch and Xbox One versions. The PS4 version actually still has cross-save functionality with the PS3 and Vita versions, and improved models and textures for NPCs as well as added ambient occlusion and better anti-aliasing. You now have the option to choose between the original and remastered soundtrack for both games. At the launch of the PS4 version, music would restart after every random encounter, but after a patch, music no longer resets and this is not an issue in any of the ports of the game. If performance is your concern, the PS4 version might be for you as it has no frame rate drops even from the original game and very good load times. So there's plenty of improvements that the PS4 port makes over the PS3 version. Though if the PS4 isn't your console of choice, it's not the only competent console port of the HD remaster as we will see coming up. In the meantime, the HD remaster released on Steam in May 2016. This is a really unique version with a lot of features not any other version has. Of course hardware matters, but on my specs I had no frame rate 
speed issues and still faster load times than any other port of the game. The option to pick between English and Japanese returns, but the text is still restricted to this setting. But if you want proper dual audio, stay tuned for another minute, I got something for you. This version also introduced button remapping and audio balancing. Also added were autosaves and game modifiers. Now, no other version of the game, including Xbox and Switch, has autosaves. So I have to believe that the only reason they added autosaves to the PC version was to cover any sort of potential crashes that could happen. Some modifiers are toggleable and some are permanent and they can be applied via an escape menu. The modifiers include turbo mode which allows the game to go up to 2 or 4 times the speed, supercharge which refills your HP, MP, and overdrive meter, the ability to increase or decrease the enemy encounter rate, auto battle, and hide the UI. Meanwhile permanent boosters include getting a 99 stack of all common items, unlock all skills, skills and max out your gill. The PC version also lets you skip some FMVs, but not in-game cutscenes. So now it's time to talk mods. And if you want to consider any mods, I recommend Special K's Untitled Project X mod. The mod features proper dual audio, you can change input notation icons, and there's a number of fixes for potential issues you may run into playing the game. It is not compatible with 10.2 as of this video though. The mod advertises cutscene skipping, but all it really does is speed up the game during cutscenes. Otherwise, there's also a lot of 4K and even 8K texture mods if that's your thing. While there were rumors of a 60fps mod years ago, make no mistake that every version of the game runs at 30fps in the field in battle and 60fps in the menus. The PC version has the most options and choices as to how to play, along with the PS4 improvements on top of the best visuals of the HD remaster and best load times, the PC definitely holds up if it's your platform of choice. Now let's fast forward to the recently released Switch version of the HD remaster as of April 2019. Now while this port does include button remapping and audio balancing from the PC version, it doesn't include autosaves, FMV skipping, boosters, or modifiers. I'm pleasantly surprised with how people have reacted to this. I don't think FF10 needs these things as badly as the other Final Fantasy ports did, but I do agree, it wouldn't hurt to add these things, you know? Touchscreen features return though for quick recovery and Aeon cutscene length. While there's no option for language anymore, you can change your Switch's system language to change the in-game language as well. The Switch version seems pretty graphically similar to the PS4 version, though ambient occlusion looks a little different. Rest assured though that the game does look really good undocked. I actually think this is one of the better ports of a game brought to Switch lately, it doesn't make any big compromises like with render scaling or anything. Should be expected though of a PS2 slash PS3 game. If I had to nitpick, the load times aren't as fast as the PS4 version and there's minimal frame drops though neither issue is nearly as bad as the PS3 version. So thankfully, it's as simple as if the Switch is your platform of choice, and especially if you play your Switch undocked, then the Switch port is a good pick for you. And now we have our final version of the game as of this video, the Xbox One version. So just like the Switch port, the Xbox port has button remapping and audio balancing under the pause menu. And just like the other console versions, has no auto saves, boosters, or FMV skipping. Graphically, it's on par with the PS4 version and has like minorly tweaked ambient occlusion, and no frame rate dips. Now there are two odd quirks I noticed about this port. So at the end of fights that go into cutscenes, the game looks like it speeds up for a brief moment, and the audio for FMVs actually stops for a moment before the actual FMV ends. I don't know what's up with these things and I'm not sure if they're a big deterrence to people, but if you're considering the Xbox port, I hope these things don't bother you. And I'm sorry in advance if me pointing them out made you notice. So as of right now, those are all of the versions of Final Fantasy X and X-2. I think it's worth understanding why people prefer the original PS2 version visually, but I personally feel that the HD remaster is still fine and an acceptable way to experience the game. While the PS3 version is the first version of the HD remaster, I feel that if you you can, you should consider the later ports from PS4 to Xbox One depending on your platform of choice. So until next time, thank you for watching.